This is Twit. So a few years ago, right before my daughter started high school, she started complaining of headaches and she couldn't see the board uh, from the back of the classroom. I took her to an ophthalmologist and uh, I asked the doctor, much to her chagrin, if he thought the cause of her headaches was overuse of her iPhone. Uh, the doctor, the ophthalmologist kind of laughed at me. He said, it's probably just genetics. Her dad wears glasses. She probably needs glasses. But there might be some science behind this, and I am going to prove it. And eventually, I'm going to prove that I'm wrong, right about this. Joining us to talk about the possible dangers to children's hearing and eyesight from uh, from technology is Julia Calderon, science writer for <laughs> Consumer Reports. Hi, Megan. How are you? Good. Thank you so much for coming on, uh, and welcome to the show. But first things first, was I right, or was the doctor uh, right, or was my daughter right? <laughs> well, it's hard, it's hard to say, you know, I think researchers are looking into this very, um, you know, they, they want to know how technology is affecting vision. And it is pretty clear that, you know, these close work activities, reading things, screens, tablets, iPads, um, even books could potentially be affecting vision. You know, it's it, they're seeing an increase in kids with nearsightedness, an increase in kids with dry eye. And, you know, it's it's not clear exactly what role technology is playing in that, but it's, they think, you know, that it might be playing some role. So you talk about near work. So is near work different on a screen than reading a book? So, no, it seems like they are both equally bad. You know, if you're reading a book versus watching an iPad or reading an ebook, it's still, you know, anything that's really close to your face is not good. And I imagine that that probably ties right into as well the the kind of advice that we hear about VR and young kids and not doing that, because even though there's this perception of depth, like it's completely fake. You, you're staring at a screen that's about this close to your eyeball. So that that probably isn't very good for them as well. I'm sure that the research didn't dive too deeply into that aspect. But no, yeah, I don't think they've really taken a close look at VR yet. But, it, you know, any screen that you're looking at it, when you're focusing on something, you're also not going to blink as much as you normally yeah. would. And so not blinking also leads to dry eye, which can over time you know, it, it can affect the lens of your eye and then that can lead to vision problems later in life. So what this really reminds me of is when I was a kid and I would sit in front of the TV set and my mom would say, hey, you know, it, it was always my mom. My, my dad apparently didn't care about this, <laughs> but my mom would say, hey, you need to sit further back from the TV. You know, it's bad for your eyes to sit close. Is, is it kind of the same thing? I mean, is this just research extended into, you know, the, the new digital age of portable devices where we're at now? Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, these devices haven't been around that long in the overall scheme of things, you know, like these devices have become portable relatively recently. And so researchers really don't know how that's affecting us. But yeah, no matter what you're looking at, it's going to affect your eyes. And that's why it's important to not only stand from far away, but also to take breaks. You know, the researchers are suggesting that you follow what's called the 20-20-20 rule, where if you're looking at something or reading, whatever, um, take a break every 20 minutes for 20 seconds and look at something that is at least 20 feet away. Mm, I never heard that. Um, so you're a science writer and what I love about your piece is it doesn't, you know, you're not trying to make the um, headlines by everything's horrible and it's going to give you <laughs> cancer. And we've delved into this topic many times and we get, you know, and everyone has an opinion. So recently there was uh, headlines about macular degeneration being caused by blue light. What do you know about those studies? Yeah, so those headlines really were upsetting because they really did overblow the research. Uh, you know, all you saw all these headlines that was like blue lights from screens cause blindness and your smartphone's going to make you go blind. It's not that was a big leap for people to take. So the study that was done was done in cells. It wasn't done in humans. And so it's it you know, it's it's potential that blue light is harmful and we think that it is harmful. Um but we don't know exactly, you know, what level of exposure is going to potentially cause a problem in your eye and it's the kind of thing that it's not going to make you go blind, you know, overnight. It's like if it does damage your eye, it's going to be something that's very slow over a long period of time. And it's something that researchers are concerned about, but it's not something that immediately is like, you know, stop using all of your screens. 
Yeah, we, we hear a lot about this whole blue screen. You know, uh, uh, smartphone manufacturers are building into the OS ways to kind of have a, a, a filter that reduces the, you know, air quotes, harmful color so that you can, you know, kind of balance your circadian rhythm and all this kind of stuff. On, on one hand, I totally get it on the and I totally practice it. Like I have my phone set up for these things. On the other hand, I couldn't point to it specifically and say, yes, it's improved things. Like, what is the science behind that 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 shows how blue light actually damages the the retina? Yeah, and so that's actually one area that we do have pretty good research is showing that blue light can affect your body. Um, it can affect the body's production of a hormone called melatonin, which helps you fall asleep. Um, I don't know if you've heard of melatonin mm -hmm. supplements that when you take them, they help you fall asleep. Um, and so the blue light from screens, researchers are finding that it, it reduces the production of this hormone, which makes it harder for you to fall asleep. And that's actually has some pretty solid research behind it. Um, the things that you're talking about, like Night Shift, you know, some mm -hmm. of those apps that where it'll reduce the blue light from your iPhone or whatever. Um, there haven't actually been a lot of studies on that to show if that is really helpful in reducing the blue light. So, you know, take that with a grain of salt. The best thing to do is just not look at any screen at least an hour before bed. Yeah. And what about hearing? Now, uh, when my kids go back to school, on the back to school like supplies list, it's pencils, erasers, earbuds, <laughs> because they have <laughs> iPads. So, I mean, what about using uh, earbuds and earphones? Do Should we be concerned about that with our kids? Yeah, definitely. I think also, you know, now that this technology is so portable and kids are listening, you know, in the bus, uh, in the car, on airplanes, wherever, when you're traveling, um, they're not only listening to sounds um, more than they used to, but also at potentially higher levels because, you know, there's a lot of background noise around them. So when they're listening with earbuds, one good thing is to, to get a solid pair of noise canceling earphones for them. And I know that that's hard as a parent because they're really expensive, but it will protect their hearing in the long run. Um, if you can reduce the levels of outside sounds that are coming in, they won't have to turn up the volume on their headphones as loud. But in general, you know, the rule of thumb is if they can't hear you, if they're listening to their headphones and you're talking to them and they can't hear you, that means it's too loud. Also, if you can hear the music coming from their headphones while they're listening, that also means it's too loud. And they should be taking regular breaks too. You know, there's, there's another rule called the 80-90 rule, which is that they shouldn't listen to the sound would it at 80 percent of the maximum volume on their device for more than 90 minutes a day but that could be hard to regulate you know with with a child when you're not with them all day yeah or when they're in their device and they've got the headphones on i mean it's it's unless you hear those cues you hear the audio kind of leaking through loud enough that you can actually hear it outside of the headphones it, it, barring that it's really hard to know exactly how loud it is they might just be really good sealed headphones you know and you don't hear how loud it is uh, so it's really it's really hard to know what are some of the signs to look for in children who might be negatively affected in these ways maybe the, you know from from a hearing perspective or or maybe they're they're showing signals that you know their their eyes are their, their eye health is diminishing in some way. What are some signs to look for? Yeah. So, you know, with their vision, if they are blinking a lot, if they're complaining that their eyes are dry, if they're irritable, if they're acting angry, you know, take a break, like, you know, take their device away, take their book away, whatever they're doing, take their video games away. And if it doesn't get better after a period of time, then you should take them to an eye doctor to get their eyes checked. With hearing, you know, if, if there's any pain or ringing or buzzing in their ears, or if you see that they're like missing parts of a conversation, or if you've found that their school performance is declining and it's, it's kind of out of the ordinary for them, then definitely you want to get their hearing checked. And, you know, they should be having regular hearing checks regardless. Mm -hmm. In your piece in Consumer Reports, you link to another piece of yours that you uh, talk about headphones specifically, and you give a lot of good advice. And And one thing you point out, which is that, I mean, if kids, I, I love the idea of noise canceling headphones, but then if they're using them and walking to school or walking oh, around, right. then that's not a good idea, right? Yeah, yeah. So that's actually something I, you know, I think for adults, it might be a little bit different. Um, I asked a researcher about this. I was like, is it dangerous to walk around in a city with noise canceling headphones on? And he was like, well, you know, if they're 
they're going to get hit by a car, you know, with their headphones on there, they'll probably get hit by a car anyways, you know, it's probably not the headphones fault. But I think for a kid, it's probably a good idea to be more aware of their surroundings, they should definitely not wear them when they're riding a bike or, you know, doing anything where they're going really fast, and they can, you know, really hurt themselves. So yeah, good to be aware of their surroundings.